I got a good one for you guys today. Hey, what is that? Have you ever thought about making a lot of money in the tech space without needing any sort of degree? Wow. Well, let me tell you this, tech sales is your answer. So listen, tech sales is a field that offers you a six figure salary awesome perks and flexible hours and basically really large commissions and sometimes even uncapped commissions and a opportunity for you to grow significantly in your career. So if you are someone who likes to help people solve problems, if you are someone who likes to make a lot of money, wants to grow significantly in their career, if you are someone who wants to improve their communication skills, if you are someone who potentially wants to be an entrepreneur, if you are someone who basically wants to be able to be in the tech industry and sell products and services to other people in the tech industry, then this is the career for you. And guys, don't just take my word for it. You are going to hear from Marvin in this video who broke into tech sales and is climbing the tech sales ladder. He is making six figures and more. So if you are ready to launch your tech sales career, you need to watch this entire video to get the gems of how Marvin was able to break into tech sales, climb all the way to a six figure salary and how he is crushing it in the tech sales space and how you can do the exact same thing as him. Hey Marvin, thank you so much for being here today, man. I'm excited about this conversation, man. How are you doing today, my man? Doing all right, doing pretty all right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I wanted to get into a conversation about you. So before we jump into the conversation of you, know, you being in tech and so forth, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved into the tech space. Sure. Uh, so I'm originally from Chicago, um, born and raised. Um, I came out to Boston when I was about uh, 21 years old and kind of rediscovered the city, fell in love, fell in love all over again uh, with the city as an adult. Um, bounced around a bit from security job to security job to eventually landing at Boston University, uh, where I did another stint for about four years in security before I transitioned into IT. Uh, I did a stint there for about eight months. I uh, realized that while well, I'm okay at tier one and tier two issues, um, I'm really a go Googler like, like everyone else, yeah. uh, but I really did enjoy talking to customers and I get that Thank you, Marvin, at the end of the call. Uh, and then around the same time, you know, uh, as fate would have it, I started uh, um, following you on YouTube. And uh, it started to you know, like, what is this whole tech sales thing? And the more I looked into it, the more it intrigued me and got very intentional. Um, went on about 27 interviews over the course of six weeks, got three job offers, uh, two for a sales role, the other for a CSM role. And I chose the one. Uh, that made the most sense for me. And now I've been in tech sales for the past two years. That is freaking awesome, man. That is absolutely awesome. So tell, tell us about this. Did you have any sales experience at all before applying to these jobs? None, none whatsoever. Wow. Tell us what experience you did have. Obviously you mentioned IT, but dive a little bit deeper into your background and how it prepared you for sales. Yeah. So um, the thing that I think prepared me the most for sales um, is being in a front facing position, uh, those soft skills, how you actually talk, interact with people and being able to speak and interact mm -hmm. with people is, uh, is key. Um, no matter what sales organization you go, you go to, they're, they're going to have a, a whole organization dedicated to training you on the hard skills. But there are some things that just cannot be taught and you have to experience. And that's where those soft skills really come into play. So my roles uh, in security, uh, it uh, enabled me and allowed me and forced me to hone that skill unknowingly um, to really help uh, set me up for success uh, in tech sales. So you got a job in a tech sales without any sales experience at all. That is absolutely fantastic. And talk to us about what exactly did you do in your first job in tech sales? So uh, I was what was what is called a sales development representative. Um, now, 
depending on the organization, they call it a LDR, a BDR. It's all the same thing, really. And um, essentially what it is, you have to prospect into, co- into companies, uh, break into them, if you will. Uh, and I, have, I do cold calls. So you're doing cold outreach, cold emails, um, cold LinkedIn messages. Um, what, what cold essentially means is these people don't know who you are, what you're selling, what you're representing. And so you have to, within the first 30 seconds or so of a conversation, uh, drive enough value for them to give you an additional 30 seconds to eventually get to a point where you can book a meeting to put them in front of an account executive. Yeah. There's a high yeah. level of the sales development representative role. Very good. And do you typically have scripts for calls or um, are you able to just create your own? Talk about that process. Yep. So um, most sales orgs, if not every sales org, has what they call a talk track, uh, something that they want you to uh, to kind of follow. Though that said, the expectation, and again, it may differ from organization to organization, is that you don't follow uh, the talk track wrote, but you use it kind of as a um, as as a as a outline, you know, to kind of help you structure, uh, structure a call. So yes, they offer, uh, they offer talk tracks, but once you kind of get, uh, up and running a bit, get up to speed, uh, you will kind of ad lib depending upon, uh, the person on the other end of the call. Got it. Got it. Got it. And talk to us about the training that you received in order for you to do this job coming from IT, right? Where you have customer service experience and help desk experience. So you do have a bit of a technical background and then having the job as a, you know, security officer and and so forth. What was the training like that they gave you in order for you to have success and to be able to do these cold calls and to be able to be a sales development rep? Um, boil down to really command of the message. Mm. Uh, how, how you can, how one can succinctly deliver a, a message and do, deliver that value prop uh, in order to win that time with the customer so they don't just hang up in your face. Uh, that That's kind of the, the, the start stop of it. Yes, there is understanding what the product is, who your customers are, who your personas are, but it, a lot comes down to just just understanding how to run proper discovery, understanding how to uh, to extract those pain points for the customer and having that value-based conversation for them to agree to book meeting with you and then actually show up to that meeting. And this is training, Marvin, that they sat you down and said, this is how you do it. This is how we do it for the company that you work for. And did they do this over a certain amount of time, maybe one month, two months, three months or something like that? Uh, so this took place over the course of two months. Um, and so whenever someone comes into a sales role, a sales organization, you have what's called a ramping period. So it's a period of time where they allow you to, and they understand that it takes time to understand the product, understand the messaging of the organization where, you know, you don't really have a quota per se that those first uh, couple of months. So it it give you that the time and space to let the training actually sink in. Very good. Very good. And talk about handling the persistent calling and in, in the follow-ups in your role as a sales development rep. What is that like? It can be tedious uh, and it is not for the, for the faint of heart. Um, so the biggest thing that one you will deal with and face uh, in tech sales is rejection, how to deal with it, with rejection. That first no is not a no. Uh, it is an opportunity to objection handle. How you, how you turn that no into a maybe and turn it maybe into a yes. And so um, one cannot get overly hung up on a bad call because you're going to have them. Plan in your mind is you're going to have some days where you just like, you're not uh, really feeling that day, but you need to be able to kind of in, in, hang up the phone, shake it off and keep dialing. Just mm-hmm. keep dialing. I love that. I love that. Guys, I want to interrupt this video to tell you about a major resource that will help you to break into tech sales as a sales development rep and a business development rep. Guys, check out Course Careers. They are a great resource that will help you learn all of the things that you need to know in order for you to be a great candidate for an entry-level role of a sales development rep or a business development rep in the tech sales space. You will be able to ace your interviews after you go through course careers. You will be able to understand exactly what the job is and how to do the job after you go to course careers. And it comes with a low 
cost at a low cost guys so check out the resource course careers if you are looking to break into the textile space and you are looking to have a community and coaches that will help you and will support you to break into the tech space check out course careers now let's get back to the video and talk about this marvin you are a father um talk about the balance right you went into tech sales uh father and, and husband Talk about the balance of your job responsibilities with being a father. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a balance. Uh, one definitely has to uh, find that balance. Not so much um, work-life balance, but really work-life integration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's how it was said to me one day. They're really stuck, and I really resonate with with that um, with that phraseology because when it comes to sales, um, you can work twenty-four hours a day if you want to. <laughs> like it, there, there's always something to do. There's always something to update in Salesforce. There's always that, oh, I can reach out to this person, you know, maybe offer this incentive, what have you, to cut to drive that urgency. Um, but one must learn when to turn that off because you the whole point of us doing this, the whole point of us being in sales is to make money. Make money for whom? For our families. Uh, and it does it does them no good if you can give all the money in the world, but you're not present. So um Time management is paramount and being able to kind of shut that off, set to the side and really devote time to your your, your children, to your family is, is key. It's not easy, um, but it can be done to, again, to have that work-life integration. I love that. I love that. Marvin, and talk about this. How does your job offer you flexibility to manage those hours? So um, most roles nowadays uh, are on what's called a hybrid schedule. Yeah, organization, uh, they may let you uh, pick some of your days, uh, like which days you come in office, which days you uh, work remotely. Some are a little less flexible. But um, just being in the space, uh, and I've had time to talk to a few uh, few individuals uh, of organizations, if you have one performing, right, that, that that's first and foremost, you actually have to be putting up the numbers. Um, you can have the conversation with your your leadership with your manager and say listen um mr manager i have this going on today can i work remotely and not just out of 10 uh particularly if you are in good standing they will allow that flexibility uh, that that is one of the, the great things coming out of COVID is working remotely working from home is much um much more widely accepted practice than it, it used to be uh pre-covid it sure is it definitely sure is and let's switch over to the money talk what is the pay for a sales development rep coming into a company for the first time? You don't have to say exactly yours, but you can just give a, a ballpark of what your pay is like and kind of what the leap was from your previous job. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the short answer is it depends, right? Um, basically, from what I've seen, uh, SGR roles, uh, you starting anywhere between... 40k uh, up to 55 60k as a base however it's going to be um your overall compensation package is going to uh, be an ote so on target earnings so coming in let's just say as a sales rep at um a acme company your um base pay could be fifty thousand dollars and your ote is 75k which means you, you come into work you do your job you don't hit quota you still need that 50k um, however, if you do hit quota, uh, your on target earnings, you would then get that twenty five, uh, an additional twenty five thousand uh, dollars paid to you in your commission checks. Now, depending on organizations, some have what's called capped commission, and then there's uncapped commission. Capped commission is where uh, if you, you hit your quota, no, you can't go over that. They, we're not going to pay you one penny over that. But most organizations, they want to incentivize performance. So they offer uncapped commission. So they're incentivizing you to overperform and overachieve. Uh, and they also, uh, in addition to this, they have what's called accelerators. So if you hit certain key metrics uh, in a given uh, span of time, then your quota can they be multiplied by certain factors depending upon your compensation uh, package? But to answer your question in short, uh, typically you're between, again, about 40K uppers to 75K OTE. Very good. And if you don't mind sharing your first year as an SDR, what was the, the increase from what you were making as a help desk uh, IT associate? So I started um, in July uh, of 2022. I'll say that my uh, my salary uh, working in, in uh, IT at, at, uh, at my previous institution, 54K flat. 
starting in July uh, 2022, by end of year, I made 50K. Wow. Wow. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you almost made your entire salary in just six months. Yeah, less than six months. Less yeah. than six months. Wow. I love that. I love that. And for somebody, Marvin, who is looking to become an SDR, right? Mm -hmm. um, what questions should they ask during the interview process to ensure that the job fits their needs as a parent or as a person who's looking to break into sales? What are some of the questions they should be asking in the interview process? So, well, one, going to all, all these engagements, understanding that recruiters are people and recruiters lie and they have a quota too and they're trying to get you in, in into the organization so take care of most things you hear uh, with a grain of salt but um good questions to ask are well how many of your SGRs are actually making quota mm. right um what is the quota what is uh your um work from home policy are you um f uh, you know, on site are you hybrid are you fully remote um these are some of the questions that help you get a pretty good understanding of what to expect. Also, uh, understanding what the benefits package is actually looking like. How much uh, time uh, in terms of PTO versus um, versus uh, sick days are you accruing? One, one for me, red flag uh, that I've picked up on is unlimited PTO. Unlimited, to have a limited PTO in sales, the two just don't mix. Because if you're not working, you're not driving deals, you're not generating pipelines, which you're not getting paid. So it's really a misnomer, um, but definitely something that's very, very good to know. And these are some of the things that will help you kind of figure out whether or not um, this company may be a good fit and feel for you, depending upon your own individual circumstances. And tell me this, Marvin, what advice would you give to others looking to get into tech sales without any prior experience like yourself? Leverage LinkedIn heavily. Uh, don't go through the front door. Uh, they, there's technology that exists now that serves as gatekeepers that will review your resume. And if it doesn't match a uh, certain criteria, it won't even make it to the recruiter. So the way it, it to break in today is to, uh, leverage LinkedIn and start making those connections with folks that are in the role that you want and just have a conversation. Uh, Hey, Anton, uh, I see you. you've been in, in the role for about a year now. Um, just curious, looking to uh, get some insight in, into role and start those relationships um, and start having those conversations. And they will be the one that's, that will, will recommend you to their leadership because oftentimes um, reps or just the folks in the sales are compensated for, uh, for recruiting talent uh, into the organization. So it's a win-win situation, but you have to open your mouth. Closed mouths don't get fed. I love that, Marvin. And you've excelled at the role of a sales development rep and have gone on to get promoted. So talk about the next journey. If someone was to break in as a sales development rep and they were to excel, what is the logical next step if they want to sell that they would go into or the logical job or logical role that they would get into? So if you are looking to sell, uh, if you want to um, carry the bag, as we say, for an organization, then uh, the logical next step from an SDR is to become an account executive. Um, that That is the uh, the traditional, that's the typical path for, for an SDR. Got it. Got it. And what does that role entail compared to that of a sales development rep? So SDR, your entire world is legion, uh, or sorry, pipeline generation. Uh, is your, your job is to prospect, make cold calls, cold outreach, uh, have vibes conversations and enough to get that person, that prospect in front of your account executive. Um, when you become an account executive, that's just one part of it. That's, as we say, top of the funnel. Um, as an account executive, you're serving as a quarterback, if you will. You, you must coordinate, uh, organize your own internal resources while also simultaneously navigating uh, your prospects um, by centers and their and their purchase process while at the same time being relevant enough and driving enough value for the investment into your services software to make sense. So it, it's a much more uh, comprehensive role. Um, pipeline generation is still very important. However, um, you can generate all the pipeline if you, you want, but if you can't close deals, 
your your time as a county executive is going to be short. Understood. Understood. And you, Marvin, what prepared you to be an account executive when you were as a sales development rep? Did you go to any sort of training? Was there training offered by your company? What helped to prepare you for that jump? Because I understand that's a pretty significant jump. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there were a, a couple of key things that, that we prepared me for the jump. Uh, first and foremost, I will say, thinking about my, the accounts that I'm prospecting into, think of it, think of them strategically. Uh, so how are we not just going to book a meeting, but how are we going to actually bring this, you know, to the, to the right folks, the right decision makers, the right account buyers to close this. Once you make that mental shift, uh, you begin looking at these accounts strategically, that will uh, begin to kind of position you uh, mentally at the very least to uh, um, make that transition. Uh, second to that, you need to start making those relationships and those connections with uh, AE managers. All right, let, the, let, let, your, uh, let the intention be known. But for me, I think key was uh, taking a training um, offered by Level Careers. Um, as it, it, this is a platform that is designed to give you the tools necessary to actually begin to think uh, think like an accounting executive and, and prepare you uh, uh, so what, what you should be expecting and like how you have these conversations, how you drive urgency, uh, um, how you uh, actually go through uh, um, like the, the sales process, regardless of what you're selling. Uh, this was very, very key uh, in, in helping me prep for my interview. Um, I met in front of a panel of a manager as well as the VP of sales. And I was able to more effectively tell that story and sell the most important product myself to them. And uh, it was enough to, you know, give me the tip of the hat and uh, the, the green flag to move on to the account executive role. And talk about this, Marvin, as an account executive, the pay is different than a sales development rep. When somebody gets promoted to an account executive, what is that pay adjustment looks like? What does that salary look like for an account executive? So for account executive, your base pay is going to jump. Now, how much it's going to jump depends on the organization. Um, however, your compensation is no longer tied to booking meetings. Your compensation is tied to closing deals. So that is the biggest and most abrupt change uh, because you, you get used to kind of flexing the muscle of, oh, I book a meeting that's X amount of hundreds of dollars or what have you. Um, to, um, you know, now you can book as many as you want, but if they lead nowhere, then you're getting paid only that, that base salary. So, uh, I think that that was like the biggest difference, uh, your, your compensation being tied to at least your, your commission being tied to the, the deal and the size of the deal, because you get a piece of that versus just book a meeting. And if it closes and if it's, I'm sorry, if it's qualified, uh, then you, you get paid on it. So those are the key differences. When you made that switch to the account executive role, did your work life integration change at all? Or was there the same amount of flexibility that you had as an SDR? Same amount of flexibility offered. However, because um, I'm now responsible for more, um, I'm now responsible for the entire sales cycle. I own the sales cycle. Um, I find myself uh, working more, working harder. So I now it's harder to kind of shut it off because now I'm constantly thinking about the deals. Like, oh, I, I can reach out to Sally Sue and, you know, oh, maybe I can send a gift card or maybe I can pull this lever and let, let me contact this person on my, my side or their side versus as SDR, you make your dials, you book your meetings. You didn't book your meetings today. It's okay. We'll try and more dials tomorrow. Um, but it kind of begins and ends there. So it's easier to kind of switch off and then go, uh, uh, you know, be dad or husband or what have you. Um, yeah. I, I, was when, that. I like that. I like that, Marvin. And when you ended your first year as an account executive, give us high level numbers of the increase that you've had from a sales development rep going from an IT salary of $54,000 a year to invest in six months, making another $50,000. What, 
um, into getting and becoming a, a, an account executive and being there for a year or how long you've been an account executive. Talk about the, the the money leaps that you experienced. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, uh, year one as SCR, I made, um, I was really half a year, $50,000. Year, it wasn't really a full year because um, I then promoted that, that April. My f- year as a rep, I increased that by, I doubled that actually, made an additional fifty thousand uh, um, dollars as 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 a rep, uh, and I, I finished my first year uh, at a one hundred eight percent quota attainment. Wow, wow! Was that your first time ever making over six figures as a tech sales representative? Yes, it was. Very good, very good, very good. What's next for you, sir? You've already gone from a sales development rep to an account executive. If someone was to excel at that role, which you have already, what is the next step in their journey as well? Is, are there multiple levels of account executive? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. So uh, you, you can come in as an account executive. Uh, then you become a senior rep uh, in your segment. Typically, you start in commercial. Uh, so depending on the organization, this may change. But typically, it's between companies between, let's say, 100 employees up to 2,000 employees. Uh, and from there, you go to enterprise. So that will be from that 2,000, let's just say 8,000. And then from there, uh, strategic. So 8,000 and up. Um, you can either you can take that path, um, or you can start out as a uh, account executive in uh, inside sales. So basically, all your interactions with customers are through a computer screen uh, or, or making phone calls. Um, or you can do what's called outside sales, or become a field rep. Pays more upfront. However, you're now out in the road. You're sleeping in hotels. You're you're driving ungodly amounts of uh, miles. Uh, but those deal sizes are typically much, much larger. Uh, and then from there, like the kind of world is your oyster because everything is sales. Um, you can go, you've got, you can go into customer success. You can, uh, one can become uh, one sales leadership. So I mean, a director of sales, VP of sales, even uh, up to CRO. It really depends on uh, what motivates you, uh, what makes you get up in the morning and how much money you're really going to make. Do you want to make a lot of money without a lot of responsibility? Stay rep. If you want to make a good amount of money with more responsibility, more recognition from from the title, go to management. If you want to do something else, hey, it's, it's really up to you at that point. But uh, the main takeaway from this should be the path is yours to make. It's a performance-based role and how you perform dictate where you end up. Very good, Marvin. Very good. And we are experiencing quite a bit of challenges within the tech industry as it relates to the job market and layoffs. What would you say to those concerned about breaking into tech sales now or just breaking into tech in general? Um, I would say there's never been a better time. Uh, We are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, Tech is here. Tech is here to stay. And there are more jobs in tech than there are uh, qualified personnel to actually fill them. And every company, no no matter uh, how big or small, it needs a sales org. It it needs folks to actually sell their products and services. So once you get in, if you want job security, I would say go into sales, go into tech sales uh, specifically. Because even if things don't work out at company A, because you've proven you can actually hack in a sales, you're part of the 5% that can actually do sales well, uh, there's always going to be uh, a job open already for you. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate your time, Marvin. You have been absolutely fantastic and given us a good understanding of how to break into the technology sales industry. And not only that, how to level up your career in the technology sales industry. I appreciate your time today, sir. We will see you in the near future. And I'm assuming that you're probably going to be under a or, you know, giving us an update on another promotion. Give us a little bit of background on what potentially maybe we should be expecting. Oh, well, Mr. you do it better now. You, you, you don't speak on your blessings when they come. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> but I, I, it will give you a little bit of insight. Um, so in terms of next steps for me, um, I am looking to uh, just 
keep leveling up, uh, level up those skills and uh, getting really, really dangerous uh, in my current role. Uh, so when I do make that transition uh, into the next role, I can hit the ground running and um, yes, make as much money as I freaking can. I love that. I absolutely love that. Marvin, thank you so much for your time today. We'll catch up with you soon, sir. <laughs>